Hey everyone, this is Michael McCarthy here, and in this video we're going to take a look at using Ornatrix to create kind of a fractal L system setup in 3ds Max. I saw a couple people asking online how you might do something like this for kind of a mossy fractal setup, and uh, Ornatrix is a great way to do this with its propagation modifier. So I have in the viewport just this little bent plane, and we're going to kind of build some of that system here on that on this geometry. With that selected, I'm going to just click on Quick Hair and add the Furball preset, which will give us some base hair that we can deal with. We're probably going to not going to need this uh, hair from Guides or the Edit Guides, so I'm going to remove those. And down in Guides from Surface, I'll just adjust this initial length to be a little shorter. So I'll set that to about 10. I also, just to get started, only really want to see one of these guides. So you set the root count to one and I'll just pivot over here so that we can see that one little root. Another thing we might want to do down here at the bottom is set the number of points for these because we're going to be generating a lot of different splines and we really don't need that much fidelity as far as how they're going to bend. So I might set this to three or four. Okay, once I've done this basic setup, I can go and add my Ornatrix strand propagation. And you can see by default you get something that maybe is a little bit better for uh, feathers or even kind of trees or shrubbery and we want something a little bit more uniform. So to do that we'll start at the top and we will choose the uniform distribution. We're also going to go in, we really don't need this many um, propagated strands so we'll set that to about four for render as well as viewport. We'll leave the segment count to four, although we could probably lower it to three for a little better performance. And then we're going to adjust the low and high range. So low and high range kind of sets where along the strand these new strands get generated. And for a kind of fractal type L system, we want this to be the same for low and high. I'm going to go with a 0.7. So they're kind of near the top, but it still leaves uh, a little bit of room there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is actually hop down to twist control because you can see these really aren't very uniform in that regard. So in twist control uh, I definitely want the number of sides to be equal to the number of guides that we're generating. So I'm going to set that to 4 and I'm going to remove the randomness so I'll just zero that out. Now you can see we have something that's very uniform. Now back up to length control, this is going to be pretty important. I'm going to set this relative to base strand, which means it's going to be based on that initial strand. So in this case, it's going to be about 10 times the length. And what we really want is something that's maybe half, or I'm going to say maybe 0.6 of that guide length. This means every time we propagate up, the strands will get a little shorter. Last but not least, we're going to go into fanning control. And this allows us to kind of point what direction these are going in. So I'll set that to maybe a negative 0.4 so that they're kind of pointed in an up direction here. Now with all that being set and kind of just removing some of the default randomness, we can copy this and paste instance. And we can do that a few times. So I'll do it at least four if not five times. You can see as we keep going we start to get that type of look. And I'll paste instance again. Looks like we might still have a little bit of randomization there. So I'm going to go in here and I think in our length we have a little randomization so I'm going to just turn that off. And here you can see we're starting to get that kind of propagation, stuff's curling down like so. And we could even add maybe one more here if we wanted to. Paste instance like so. All right, so now we can go in and do a lot of different stuff. Uh, if we wanted to uh, use Ornatrix Edit Guides, we can go in and we could just comb this in any directions that we want. But I'm looking for something a little bit more procedural than that. So maybe I'll just add 
like an ornatrix strand gravity or something like that. So that's going to be a bit too much force. Yeah, maybe I set that to zero, zero, 004 or something just to give it a little bit of a bend. We'll go up to maybe that 0.7. So these kind of drop away some. So you can see we have our kind of little fractal puff. We even get that nice little curling around the end here, which is nice. And now we can decide to kind of propagate this along the surface. We started with just one, and we can kind of propagate that down. Actually, before we do that, what I'd like to do is add our OX mesh from strands. And that's going to give us some geometry to work with. I'll probably set this to a uh, cylindrical type of mesh. And under render settings, maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller. So maybe a 0.25, like that. Now, one issue that we have is kind of this is the same render size all the way through. And we'd like them to get a little bit smaller as the length gets smaller. And this is actually a really good option for our Ornatrix generate guide data. So I'm going to go in here and just say OX generate guide data. And from here, I'm going to name this render length. And under generation method, I'm going to say I want this based on the strand length. And I'm going to leave the value at 0 to 1, which is fine for now. Now when I go up to render settings, under my thickness map, I can click on assign channel. And that new channel will be here. So I'll go into render length and say assign. When I turn on show end result, you can see that as we get smaller, as far as the length, the actual render settings thickness gets a little bit smaller. So we might be able to bump this up to a 0.4 or something like that. So that's looking pretty good for the moment. Now that we have our little broccoli, we can uh, probably propagate it along our surface. So I'm going to go in down here, say guides from surface, and we can add some more in here. So I'm going to keep it random. You could do it very uniform if you wanted to, but we'll keep it on random area and we'll just try 10. You're going to need more than that. So we'll set about 20. And we can see those guys generating over the surface. I think they could be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go into my render settings and set that to maybe a 0.6 overall. So a little bit thicker all the way throughout. And let's go back in and uh, we'll, we'll add some more of them. So down here, 20, maybe 35. Okay, so there we go. We got a slightly random distribution. Also, when you do go into your guides from surface, if you scroll down to the bottom here, you can see we have some randomness based on length that's coming up here, uh, which is pretty good too. So I'll go into the material editor and just give this a quick uh, material. Drag that on there. Maybe make it somewhat green and yellow. A little bit of an olive. And we can render that out. So we can choose to use scanline, which should probably make pretty short work of it. And for something slightly better, we can go ahead and maybe add some uh, quick V-Ray light. I'll just move that up and adjust the light quickly. And the multiplier some. Add a few more guides in here. Certainly getting a bit more dense. And maybe I'll make the randomness a little bit more too. So maybe bump that up to 30. That's just going to adjust the random length. 
All right, so we can kind of zoom in here, deselect. If we want to get a better idea of what we're going to look like, we can go with high quality in the view. So there you go. You can see the light cast processing, a little progressive refinement, and we get our little L system broccolis there. So hopefully this can help you to create this effect inside 3ds Max with Ornatrix and uh, help you in some of your productions. Thank you very much.